Welcome to Real Time with Florida Sportsman. This week we're in the west central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum. We're fishing inshore for grouper. Our trip to St. Pete started with meeting this week's guest host, Stuart Davis, aka Psycho Snooker, on the west central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum at Munch's, a local breakfast place. Munch's is a great little diner that apparently has been around since the early 50s. We talked with Stuart, formulated a plan, and headed over to Fort DeSoto to launch the Triton. This isn't the first time we fished the St. Pete, Tampa Bay area. Every time we've been over here, we do great. This is an awesome fishery. First order of business was to head over to the Skyway Fishing Pier and to net some bait. It took a little while to find the right size bait, but after some heavy chumming, some moving around a bit, we located the right size pilchards. We got a well full and headed off to our first spot. That's the size we're looking for right there. Look at that pilcher. That's a gumdrop. So like I said, we're in St. Pete Beach, fishing Tampa Bay, and Stewart's on this crazy inshore grouper bite. You know, this is something that I've never seen before, but it's real reminiscent of the fishery that I have back in Stewart for snook. All right, we're sitting here in the west central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum, Stewart Davis, AKA Psycho Snooker, on the forum. You got something totally crazy for us. I've never even heard of this. Grouper fishing, residential docks. Yeah, we're gonna try some big pilchers, we're gonna throw them underneath the docks and these grouper will just come up and eat them. So that's something, after trying for snook many times, end up catching grouper and it seems to be what's here. Right, because this is the way we fish on the east coast, on the docks, you know, for snook. I don't need to go 10, 20 miles offshore to get these grouper. And they're keeper grouper. Keeper grouper, that's what we've been catching. It's awesome. That's gotta be insane pulling them up underneath that dock. It is, it's a lot of fun, we'll see. Be a little bit of a challenge to get them out, but we should have a good day. Let's do it. So we show up to this first dock, and I'm not really certain what to expect. You know, but it's pretty basic stuff. Just a J-hook, pilchard, flipping under heavy structure. 80-pound floor, we busted out the heavy stuff today. This is what you need. This is what we need. Torque sevens, 80-pound braid, drags locked all the way down. Yep, 100% down. We combat. call this combat fishing. Right along the edge, Stuart? Yeah, don't right get... Right on the edge of the dock? Right at the edge of the dock. Stay out of the combat zone. You ready? Oh my God. Okay. I kid you not, the first cast, the first bait on the first dock gets hammered. Stewart is onto something. I was skeptical, my producer was skeptical. He proved us wrong. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That didn't take long. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a tag in him, look at that. That's a nice fish right there. What a fishery. Man, he just hammered that thing. He did. God, this is just like our snook fishing. This is a typical size here. They get a little bit bigger. What a great fish. That didn't take long at all. No. God, I want to do that again. Early for a bath. <laughs> oh man, I'm addicted. I can't get a bait in there fast enough. It seems to me the most important thing is to have the right gear. It is very important. It's, uh, I mean, I can't imagine doing it with something less than this. This drag is locked all the way down. These torques have 40 pounds of drag and I barely stopped that fish. 80 pound braid, 80 pound fluoro, big old trocar hook. Man. God, they thump it like a big snook. Do every one of these docks hold fish? Um, there's a lot of them that do. You just gotta hit. I gotta pull them out from underneath the dock. <laughs> no, you're caught. You're, you're caught. You're caught. No, I'm not caught. The hell, I'm caught. I'm caught onto a grouper. <laughs> Look at <laughs> Look at this fish. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. <laughs> Why do you run 10, 20 miles offshore when you can do this right here? These are good fish. I mean, a lot of people travel 50 miles offshore, spend $500 worth of gas, and they'd be happy with this size fish. I'm catching it in somebody's backyard. No doubt that's a keeper. Oh. <laughs> if you don't like that, that is nuts. That is just like our snook fishing on the East Coast. You flip it in there, you tighten your drag all the way down, and you just hang on. 
Look at that fish. Look at the size of that fish on the dock. Residential dock. You guys that are running offshore, man, I have no idea why. You know, it's kind of ironic that we showed up to fish with Stuart the day that we did. Gag grouper season actually closed the day before we arrived. God. That is fun. That is fun. I think Stuart was a little concerned I was going to catch all the fish off his one dock, so we decided to make the move. Just a couple docks away. So Manly, the winter time, we just had our first cold snap and you said that was, you know, now's the time to come and do this. It is, right when that first cold front comes through and changes the water temperature down probably a good 10 degrees. Uh, first couple of days after that, the group would kind of come in and next thing you know, they're around the docks and they stay here pretty much a lot of the winter months. You got one, don't you? Yep. <laughs> Pull them! Pull them. Get out of That's a good one too. Oh, another good fish. What a pretty fish. Pretty fish. Beautiful. God, nice. In between the ones we just caught. As crazy as this is, it's not really a surprise that these grouper are in here. You know, these grouper are known to move out of the Gulf in the wintertime into the shallow waters. In the Tampa Bay, it's a big body of water. It has big shipping channels, which actually are notorious for wintertime trolling of grouper. We're using these white baits, just cultured. What else works? Uh, big thread fins will work in here, uh, some pinfish. Um, you gotta be careful the size of the pinfish. Uh, gotta get them the right size. Sometimes we're up three or four inches, usually it's pretty good. I don't know if Stuart was being kind, a good, gracious guest host, but he kept shaking his fish off. Oh, it's a big one! Pull him out of there! Pull him right, pull him right, pull him right. He wants to go right, pull him right, pull him right. He broke. He broke. I'm sorry, Pop Pop. That was a giant. <laughs> <laughs> yelling at you, telling you what to do in your home waters. Just smack me with the pole next time. Yeah, I kind of was <laughs> a little bit concerned, but that was good. You were giving me good advice. How long have you been fishing these waters, Stuart? Uh, 18 years. 18 years. Jeez. Pretty much all inshore? Mostly inshore. I'm not an offshore guy. I uh, like to cover the inshore and kind of learn the waters. and. Offshores uh, seems to be pretty far to have to go get grouper. Uh, especially when you got them in your backyard right here. Pretty lucky. The whole bay is full of them. You know, it's funny, talking to Stuart, he said he accidentally discovered this fishery. He had been snook fishing these docks. He kept getting broken off, finally beefed his tackle up, and realized it was grouper that kept breaking them off. There you go. 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 I got Good no job. time to breathe. <laughs> Man. Switched over and put a little jig head on. Flipped him in there. That is fun. Man, what a great grouper fishery. St. Pete Beach area, these docks. It is so much fun pulling these things out of here, man. Nothing like it. Takes a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Look at the reward. Perfect. There he went. Stuart likes to utilize the chumming. You know, we took the smaller pilchards and greenies that we had caught in early in the morning, and every dock he'd throw a handful out there, kind of excite the grouper. After a couple hours of fishing, we developed a pretty good pattern. And we realized that certain docks had better bottom structure while holding fish, and all we really did was bounce from dock to dock. <laughs> Yeah, look at that one. <laughs> Son, look at that fish. I barely got him hooked. That is a healthy grouper right there. I switched over using that half ounce jig. It's really just getting that bait down to the bottom. Is that just a full belly from feeding? Look at that thing. That is a mama. She's getting ready to, I don't know if it's spawning season or what, but that is just a fat, fat fish. God, what a great grouper. I do that every time. 
It's pretty apparent that you can try this anywhere on the west coast, especially where you have a good offshore fishery of grouper. Winter time, these fish move inland, these big bodies of water, they have to set up somewhere. They love structure just like any other fish, and these docks are perfect habitat. Real time. It's not always what you're catching, but how you're catching them. After reading Stewart's post in the west central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum, I knew he was on a sick bite with a crazy technique, and I'm so glad I made the trip over here to St. Pete Beach. It was because of his post that I chose him to fish with, and I need your reports to continue, so I may fish with you next on Real Time with Florida Sportsman. Hard to set. It's got to set back up. I forget. I'm like. That's why they call it residential. It's not gonna be as peaceful as fishing on the flats, but it's a little more effective. <laughs> you got it. Who's more nervous, the bait or you? <laughs> I guess you got little ones too, huh? There you go. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. he's sleeping. Yeah, you're sitting there sleeping. Turn him, turn him, turn him, turn him, turn him. There you go. 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 That's how you do it. Like largemouth fishing, flipping for bass. We're flipping for grouper. Woohoo! Right there.